Hello, everyone. This is Mandy Solacek from the Long-Term Care Department here at Premier Marketing. Um, Thank you for joining us today. We are excited to have Lauren Savenzio from National Guardian Life here to talk to us about their essential LTC product and specifically about their shared care writer, which we are big fans of here at Premier. Um, So welcome to Lawrence. We're happy to have you here. Um, Before we get started on the presentation, just a couple housekeeping items. You will see in your webinar system here, there is a section for questions. If you have questions for Lawrence, um, please input them in this section here and we will do our best to answer some at the end of his presentation. Also, if you have any troubles with audio or having troubles with um, seeing the presentation, this is also a great place to reach me too, and I can try and troubleshoot and help you out from there. So um, without further ado, uh, Lawrence, I will let you take it away. Hey, thanks, Mandy. I appreciate it. And thank you, everyone out there on the line, for taking some time out of your day to learn a little bit more about NGL Essential LTC and specifically our shared benefit amount rider. Um, I believe over the next few months, we're going to be doing some quick soundbite sessions here at the most, probably a half hour, including Q&A. I plan to really only speak about the rider itself for maybe 10 minutes uh, and then have some conversation with you via your questions. So with that, um, I want to begin here and show you what some of the upcoming topics might be. And I'm not just going to talk about what the rider is. I will also talk about how it works, why it's important, how to sell it, when to bring it up, how it compares to other things out there, all that good stuff. We're going to take a deep dive. Um, So specifically today, we're going to be talking about the joint policy structure and how that works with the shared benefit amount rider. We're going to focus on only that first bullet on your screen. So here's my if you will, uh, inflammatory statement of the session, right? I hope it begins that way, and in about seven or eight minutes, you're going to say, oh, I kind of get why Lawrence said that. I fully believe that if you're talking to a couple about long-term care planning and you don't bring up this product, that you are leaving a compelling option off the table. Sounds a little crazy right now, a little bold. Bear with me. And I'm hopeful that after a few minutes, you'll agree with me. The reason why I make that bold statement is simply because of how we built this thing. So generally, right, when you're out there, you're talking to Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, who should be two blue circles on your screen here, right? What do you normally have to do? Well, you have to sell two policies, don't you? He gets a policy. She gets a policy. You have to take both of their premiums, you have to add them together, and then ultimately you have whatever their monthly or annual outlay is going to be, right? We tried to simplify that a little bit in creating one joint policy that has a joint premium. There's no amount that belongs to him and amount that belongs to her. It's just a joint premium. There's nothing to add up. So it's not he has his, she has hers. It's one policy for both of them together. That's represented by that rounded rectangle on your screen. Now, if you look within the rectangle, you do have two blue bubbles. Those bubbles represent their own separate benefit amounts. There is no circumstance, even if one of them dies, where they will ever use each other's benefits. He has his, she has hers, all within a joint policy with a joint premium and a built-in joint waiver of premium. So if just one goes on claim, that joint waiver kicks in and the premium, the joint premium, is waived when the benefits are being paid. So a little bit of an easier structure. Is it a little bit different? Absolutely. But once you get it, I think you'll see the simplification in, in this structure here. Now, to talk about the second bullet on your screen. And you notice we didn't call it shared care. We called it a shared benefit amount rider. The reason why we called it a shared benefit amount rider is because it truly is a separate third benefit amount. 
So a moment ago, you had two blue bubbles on your screen. Now you have three. So if, for example, you were selling a uh, five-year benefit period, you now have one policy with three five-year benefit pools, each represented by one of those blue circles. He has five years. She has five years. And then there's a shared five-year pool that either or both of them can access once they exhaust their own pool. So to give you a visual on that, let's look at Mr. Insured as an example here. And let's say he goes on claim. And he goes through all of his five years worth of coverage, which based on claim statistics is unlikely. Three years would have been a better example for me to use. But let's say he goes through all of his hypothetical five years. He's out of benefits. What does he do now? Well, he's got that blue arrow that's flashing on your screen right now as his bridge or his pathway to use some of that shared benefit amount. If he needed all of it, he could have used all of it. But let's use an example here where he uses about 80% of it, and then he passes away. The beauty of this structure, or one of the many things that creates beauty within this structure, is let's say a few years go by after he's passed, Mrs. Insured now needs to go on claim. Well, you see, she still has her full benefit pool left. He, remember, there's no circumstance where they will ever touch each other's benefits. So he never used any of her benefits. She was not hung out to dry and left with a year or two left or whatever might be required by some other carrier's policies out there. She has her full benefit left. So if a couple of years later she goes on claim herself, she can use all of her pool. And she then has a similar pathway to access the shared benefit amount. And if she still needs care, she can use what's left in that shared benefit amount once she exhausts her own pool. So you have a joint policy with separate benefit amounts for each individual. And if you add the shared benefit amount rider, you get a separate third benefit amount available to either or both of them once they use up all of their own original benefit amount. So I go back to my bold statement. I truly believe that if you're speaking to a couple about long-term care planning and you don't bring up this product, you're leaving a compelling option off the table. And the reason why I can back that bold statement up is via these two features here can be tremendously advantageous when comparing policies just because of how we built this thing. Now, I told you I'd only speak for about 10 minutes about the rider. It's been 10 minutes already. Give me three or four more because I want to show you a comparison. And then I want to open it up for questions. So if you haven't already typed your questions into Mandy or put them in the chat, um, please Get your questions in because I would be more than happy to stay for a full half hour or even 40 minutes if you have them um, to address any questions or comments or concerns that you may have. Now, the last three or four minutes that I asked for, um, I wanted to show you a comparison. So this next slide will have a lot of numbers on it. Focus on the bottom for me first. You're going to see two silver bubbles on the bottom. Within these silver bubbles, they're displaying the difference between us on the left with this joint policy and third benefit amount structure versus the other guys on the right who generally sell two separate policies with a bridge in between called shared care. Back to those silver bubbles on the bottom. That's the difference in day one benefits available on what I like to call straightened arrow plain and simple long-term care policy design. If you can't read the little font on the bottom, don't worry. All that's telling you is that this is simple long-term care insurance. Very commonly sold plan. It's 200 bucks a day, three years, 3% 3 compound inflation, and shared benefits at the most common rate class for a 55-year-old couple. The difference in day one benefits, 657 versus 432. That's almost $150,000 in available benefits, excuse me, $250,000 in available benefits on day one. That's not a small difference. 
Now, this is a 55-year-old couple. Let's talk some hypothetical inflation here. 3% compound inflation for, I don't know, 30 years. Put them in their mid-80s. You're going to be talking about almost a half a million dollar difference in available benefits once you account for inflation. Just because of basic policy structure. Joint policy with a third shared benefit amount versus two separate policies with a shared care bridge in between. Tremendous difference in available benefits. Now, if you avert your eyes towards the top of the screen in the black font, not only are we offering a significant more in available benefits because of the structure of this, we're also very price competitive in this marketplace. There's many scenarios where if you're talking to a couple, this is a very compelling option from both standpoints. A benefit standpoint as well as a premium standpoint. So with that said, I think I've already chewed up the extra three or four minutes I asked you all for. Um, I want to highlight again, I'll bring it back up on the screen here as I go through the slides to get back to it. Highlight again some other topics that we may be covering in the next couple of months or over the first half of the year. We've got some other very interesting and compelling features on this product. Guaranteed single pays. In many states, a guaranteed 10-year pay, lifetime benefits, strategies where you can use riders to create benefits at death on a traditional chassis or a surrender value. But today, we focused on that first bullet, which was the joint policy and the shared benefit amount rider. Um, I want to thank you all very much for taking, like I said, it's a soundbite kind of call these 15 minutes uh, to chat with us about this benefit because I think it's a tremendous rider. Um, I can also show you a very simple way to quote this. We have a great quick quote calculator that very easily displays the third pool. Uh, so if that is something of interest, please type it in the questions box or if Mandy were still waiting on questions, I'll go ahead and just do a demo of that. Um, let me know where we are with questions yeah. and we'll uh, go from there let's for the next few minutes. Share. I've got some coming in so far, but let's do, yeah, let's go ahead and quick show them um, the calculator so they can get a, get a view for it. Beautiful. So to do that, I'm gonna go here. And I have this bookmarked on my web browser. You notice I'm not logging into it. This is an open access quick quote tool. It's not designed to be a full-blown illustration. It's designed to give you a quick snapshot of what the plan is, how much it costs, and what the value of it is compared to the cost. It provides you a one-page quick quote that I think is a great way to show the value of the plan. And it's also really easy to use. You can run a quote in about 15 seconds. Um, most people don't believe me, so I'm going to do it right in front of you. I'm going to create a joint policy here. I'm going to put in a couple dates of birth that will give me a 55-year-old couple. I'm going to give them our premier rate class. It's a male-female couple. I hit next. So now I'm on my plan selection page, and I'll zoom in just a hair so it's a little bigger for all of you. This thing defaults to that straightened arrow, long-term care, buck 50 a day, three years, 3% 3 compound, shared, 90-day a limb, lifetime annual premium. If that's what you want to quote, Hit calculate. You got a quote. So what did that take me? Maybe 25 seconds because I slowed down to show you how it all worked. That's how easy this thing is to use. And I think it does one better than your typical quote unquote illustration, which usually just lists what a benefit's called and then lists a premium next to it. And you have to go to like page 30 to really see the value of the thing. This is all right here. So to use some Let's say, can I use these drawing tools? Here we go, go to webinar. Um, here, it shows you, you've got one benefit pool for this person, another benefit pool for the second person. If either or both run out, you have a shared benefit amount, right? It shows you the three pools. I love that feature of this thing. And then it also shows you what your premium is. And by the way, this right here is interactive. So if you change this to a 10 pay, it will tell you X amount and annual premium for 10 years instead of annual lifetime premium. What this does even better is it puts the premium next to the benefits for you. So it'll say, hey, at policy issue, you pay your annual premium one time. 
add up these three pools, you've got about a half a million bucks worth of benefits available to you up to $150 a day. Talk about a value proposition of benefits versus premium. And this thing gives you a snapshot at age 85. You would have paid in about 143000 or so. Your benefits at that time are worth $1.2 million, available to you at that time up to $364 a day. Talk about a value for the premium. And, of course, if you want to generate a report, click on the button, put in some information if you'd like. I'm going to leave it blank for now. And I hit print quote. I promise you a one-page quick quote. That's exactly what this is. You get a one-pager that looks a lot like that user interface. Top half is really what you, the consumer is concerned about. This bottom half is really all just an input summary. Fast, easy way to run quotes in less than 30 seconds. And I like this as a screen sharing tool as well. Because when you're with the client, you can go and show them, hey, uh, you know, th this was a lifetime pay. And they say, well, maybe I'm concerned about potentially getting a rate increase in the future. Well, this happens to be in Alabama. I have a guaranteed single or a 10-year premium in Alabama. They're concerned about that. Check this box. Recalculate. You've got a new number and a new quote. That easy. There's a lot of things here, and we'll go through this as the year goes on. A lot of features where you can check the box and mitigate the concerns of the client. In this particular session, we're highlighting the joint and the shared. And I think this calculator does a great job of showing you what the value of those pools are. So with that, Mandy, I'll pass the baton back to you. If we have any questions, I'm happy to address them. Okay, yeah, we do have some. So the, the calculator got people really excited. They, a lot of things came saying, yes, demonstrate it, please. So thank I you for showing that. that. Awesome. Okay. My pleasure. So, and it is the calculator is nice because it does show that little um, that visual. So, um, we like using both our full illustrations and the quick calculator as well. So, um, let's see. First question that came in was, how long does the policy have to be in force until the um, shared benefit goes into effect? So, it's not a matter of being in force. It's really more of a matter of what you've sold the person, right? So what I mean by that is let's say you have a three-year benefit period, and it's also a matter of when they go on claim. So let's use an extreme example, right? Let's say these people file a claim and begin that claim the day after they're approved. Well, if you have, back to that, you know, three bubble image, you have three three-year pools, that person goes on claim, they have to go through their three-year pool and exhaust that benefit amount before they can then access what's in the shared, because why would you use both at the same time, right? It's it, it's meant as, as a back safe, just in case you run out of your own pool. So the answer to that is it really depends on the scenario. It depends on when they go on claim, depends on how long the benefit period is that you sold them, and it depends on how long it takes them to exhaust that initial benefit period. I hope that answers okay. your question. I think so. So let's do this next one now. Um, we do have, um, I think we do have some agents in our call who are maybe relatively new to um, long-term care. So I don't know if they fully understand what some of, how our competitors shared riders work. So they asked, so how does this how is this majorly different than the other one? But I think it's cause not in the lack of you didn't explain yours well. I just think they don't know how the other one works. Um, so I don't know if you want to try to address that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Essentially, no, totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> no problem at all. Yep. So I'll go back here uh, just as a reference. So we're on the left, and I explained how ours works with the three pools, et cetera. So on the right, the way the other policies out there generally work is, so each of these rounded squares here are a separate policy. You generally have to sell two separate policies. So Mr. Insured gets his policy, Mrs. Insured gets her policy. Now, if you sell what they refer to as their shared care rider, how it would work is Mr. Insured would use all of his policy. And then if he is out of benefits and still needs care, 
he can walk across this little arrow bridge and use Mrs. Insured's benefits. And depending on the carrier, he may have to leave her one or two years worth, uh, depending on what their rules are. But if he had a three-year benefit period, used all that, he can then go over here. And if that carrier requires one year, needs to leave, uh, be re uh, remaining for the remaining insured, then he could use two of her three years. So that's how theirs work. And again, you know, part of the beauty of the difference in structure, right? If that happens, he used all of his three and then he used two of her three. Well, she's only got one left. What if she needs care? She's only got a year. That's never going to happen on her structure because remember within the joint policy, they will never touch each other's pools. You will only use your own and then the shared pool. So there's a lot of really interesting nuances and scenarios you can go through when you compare these two different structures. So I hope that was thorough enough speaking on behalf of how the other guys generally work without mentioning any specific carrier or, you know, yeah, I know. Uh, their so, policies and rules. I was and like, all that how do stuff. I? I'm trying to I play like, nice. I know what they're asking. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how do I phrase this? Because it is, you know, it, it is the, the, um, it is the difference between what, and what makes obviously National Guardian Life unique in their product is one of them. One of the reasons is this shared benefits. So um, let's right. see. Another question was um, essentially they're asking if it's, they ask, they phrase it as if it's use it or lose it. But <laughs> essentially, I think what they're asking is um, what were to happen, I suppose, if they didn't use the shared pool, um, but really, I don't know how to work that question. I might follow up, whomever asked that one, I might follow up with you individually well, to kind of ask you a little bit better what I'll you're asking. I'll tell you asking. what, <laughs> let me kind of try and hit all bases there. So use yeah. it or lose it, I'll speak from a general benefit perspective. Um, it is not a use it or lose it policy. We are a reimbursement long-term care insurance policy. So if you have $150 per day and you have a three-year benefit period, when you do the math, 150 times 365 times three, um, you have a pool worth $164,250. If there is a day where you're on claim but you don't use any benefits, the pool doesn't change. It will stay where it was the previous day. But if there's a day where you pull out 50 bucks, the pool gets reduced by 50 bucks. If there's a day where you pull out all 150, the pool gets reduced by 150. So it reimburses you based on actual charges up to that daily benefit maximum. So it is not use it or lose it. Whatever you don't use just stays in the pool and then the benefit period will last longer than the three years, right? The way I used to explain it when I was in the field of consumers was, hey, it's a, it's a multiplier. It's not a defined period of time. So even though you're getting a three-year benefit period, you're really multiplying $150 times the number of days in three years. If you use 150 every single day for three years, it'll last three years. But if there's days where you use a little less, it will stay in the pool and then it will last longer. Same goes for the shared benefit amount. So I hope that answered your question, whoever typed that one in. I think we covered um most of it uh let's see okay one okay we've got one more and this one is inquiring i think about because you've mentioned it's joint there's one premium it's not part of the premium it's hers or theirs so they asked so what happens premium wise when one of the parties in the joint policy pass away so in most states uh, as of today, in 38 states, uh, as of February 4th, which is just in a few weeks, it will be in 43 states. Uh, when one party dies, the premium will be reduced. So to go back to the quick quote real quick, this was our 55-year-old couple, about 50 a day, three years, 3% shared, 90-day EP, right? Um, when you look at the fine print down here, oh, sorry, that highlighted way too much stuff, down here, You'll see it will say upon the death of the primary insured, 
The remaining premium for the secondary insured will be X. If the opposite happens, it will be Y. Um, it's really just based on gender uh, and original issue age uh, of the individuals. So the premium will go down in, as of today, 38 states at the death of one insured. I uh, have five additional states joining that list on February 4th, and we're hopeful we'll get that in the remaining states throughout the course of this year. Um, but if you are in one of those jurisdictions where the premium does not go down when one dies, I think you'll find that the overall premium for the policy is slightly cheaper in those states where that doesn't yet, uh, in those states that do not yet have that enhanced feature. So simple question, right. long answer. Well, I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> no but, worries. It was a perfect answer. All right, sir. Well, I think that's all the questions. Some of the other ones are just people interested in getting set up and some other questions um, linked to the calculator. Everyone's really interested in the calculator, too, so I'm sure that's something we will send up with our follow-up as well. So um, with that, thank you, Lawrence, for joining us today. We're excited to have you to come back and continue to do these um, webinar topics with us about your product. So, and thank you to everyone who joined us here today um, for registering. If you didn't catch all of the of the presentation, a recording will be sent out to everyone who registered, um, along with some follow up information too. So, if you do have any questions on National Guardian Life, their long term care product, um, or if you'd be interested in getting set up with it or learning more about long term care, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us here at Premier. We would love to help you and answer any questions that you have. Um, so, Lawrence, thank you so much for coming. We always appreciate when you're here. Hey, absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for the time and thank you, everyone on the line, for taking some time to hone in with me on the joint policy and the shared benefit amount rider. And I look forward to chatting with all of you next time when we explore some of the other key features of this thing. So, Thanks again, and I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, everyone.